A very warm, and, and I mean a very warm welcome to the Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show, the isolation interview with Jem Sharples. Hello, Jem. Hello, Nancy. How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Yeah, great to be, well, great to be seeing you virtually, at least. Yes. Yes, this is a new way of broadcasting, isn't it? It is, it is. And it proved to be a very popular way as well. Apart from everyone's got ears that hang down like a spaniel. Yeah, no, I haven't got that. But, I'm, I know, no. I've just... I've just got You're lots of hair, which is making me very hair. hot. <laughs> well, I'm getting more hair. I've tried to stick it down a bit today. For need to cut, but still, my my daughter said she might do it for me. <laughs> I, th this is lockdown hair. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Every time I do a Zoom call, I think next time it's gonna it's gonna fill the screen. I think my hair's gonna need its own Instagram account by the end of this all. <laughs> well, it's looking very curly. It looks looks lovely. It looks like it needs no touching at all, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to, as I said, Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show, the isolation, isolation interview. Um, so just a bit of background. I've known Jim for a long time. He is um, part of Tenors Unlimited. Um, do you want to just tell my listeners about how Tenors Unlimited came to be? And then we'll talk a little bit about life in lockdown and how you become a little bit of an internet sensation. <laughs> well, Tenors Unlimited came to be, I was working with Scott in London and about nearly 20, nearly 20 oh years God. ago, Nancy. I know anyone that's looking, it's hard to believe, but it was nearly 20 years ago. And uh, we were between jobs. He'd been in the West End, I'd been in the West End doing different things. I was, I was in a doily cart production actually, and he was in uh, Wicked, I think, something like that. And he'd, been, he'd just come out of that and we were, in, we were with another chap. And we all thought we were working, we, we met sort of doing corporate stuff and we decided that this was a market that we wanted to explore a bit more, but in a more polished way, that we, it needed a group. And there weren't any groups around at the time that's had that sort of crossover style. So because that we were popular classical singers, that's, at least that's what we were doing when we were all coming together. We thought, well, why don't we formalise this? We all liked writing and we all got on and we thought, well, We've, we, we're enjoying our careers, but let's let's take this leap of faith in this new new way. Set up a group. There's nothing like us around as well, which was a bonus, and see what happens. And really, we 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 set up, um, and within a few months, we were up and running very successfully. And we've enjoyed. It's had, of course, like any career, it's had its ups and downs. But we've we've enjoyed the last 17, 18 years making music together. Paul, who's been in the group for about 15 years, joined us about two or three years later, three years later, and uh, was a very, he's, he's, he's often referred to as the, the, new, the, the old new boy. Oh, the new kid on the block. Yeah, but he's not at all. I mean, he's, been, he's been with us a long, long time, and uh, he's, a, he's a valued friend and colleague. And what I love about you guys is your friendship, and I think that's what makes it work. That's what makes your concert i mean apart from the fact that you all are incredibly talented and trained to the highest level of you know sort of musical theater or opera is that your friendship on stage is so apparent and the banter that you guys have is hilarious i mean yeah i've been to a couple of your shows now and i didn't you know i was expecting great music but i did not expect those bands they were impressive and <laughs> really funny well it's um it possibly starts off because i think we felt that the classical world can be quite stiff and starchy and the concert world in both camps can be stiff and starchy we wanted it to be something that was very much ourselves our own energy and so it's very much us on stage of course we can become characters if we're doing scenes from Les Miserables for example yeah. yeah yeah but but for the most part we we are there on stage to show who we are as singers and as musicians and as friends and we're, we're proud of that our tagline for many years has been the Rat Pack of Opera, because I think not just because of the fact that we make music and we sing the crossover, so we sing the crooners as well, but because of our bonhomie together. Mm. And it sounds, it sounds, talking about it sounds a little contrived, doesn't it? Oh, we get on so well, but we really do. And we, we're great friends and, and we'll come to it later, no doubt, but in lockdown, it really tests you. And, uh, and we've, we've, we've sort of stayed, strong together through through the internet and communicating and all that sort of stuff but we'll get to that later yeah of course absolutely and some of the concerts that you've done have been you know have been amazing venues like um wembley stadium at the fa cup final 
I mean, because of the situation that we're in now, does that seem even more more bonkers and sort of distant? Because it's it's, it's almost inconceivable to imagine that we'll ever be you know collectively meeting to to watch you know to go to the theater or watch a massive football match or anything like that. that's quite hard to comprehend at this stage of lockdown it's a very difficult thing to comprehend and a very strange thing for us as a, as a, as a group and as a business to try and fathom along with all the theaters and all the venues and the sports venues everyone's trying to work out how they can basically start again and i think the entertainment industry is very much needed but in an odd sort of way it's probably going to be one of the last things that gets back Mm. on its feet uh, from a theatrical perspective and in a healthy sort of normal way in a sporting perspective until there's some sort of cure for corona mm. or at least we learn how to, we can cope with it like HIV for example there's no cure but we have medication that we know we can trust to, to, su to suppress it so it is a it's a difficult time because no one seems to know I think there's a confidence and uh, an energy that's that's come after eight weeks nine weeks of lockdown that wants to get moving again but i don't if i'm honest hand on heart i don't feel that that's built on any facts that, of things really changing it's just built on uh, frustration that things have stopped um and i think the reality is we're probably we're going to be lucky to see any work this year i think the, the, of the traditional style i'm hoping we've got dates in the diary for october and everything else was shifted and rescheduled for either Christmas or next year. But I'm hoping that um, we can we can be working in October. But it, it seems highly unlikely that people, I think the desire will be there, but then when the reality kicks in, mm. if you're sitting in close proximity to somebody in a theatre, I think that might be very difficult to, to actually achieve. But who knows, people are very creative and I, they're already talk, there's already talk, and you mentioned specifically about how distant that feels. It does feel distant. But there's a, there's a strong momentum to try and get these things back up and running, isn't there? And oddly enough, the FA Cup would be one thing we could probably do because you're miles from anybody in the middle of the pitch. And That's you, could, true. You, you could probably successfully isolate singing Abide With Me, actually. And the three of us could isolate. We could stand six feet apart. We, we could do what we need to do to make our show happen, actually. But it's what the audience does, how the audience gets into theatres and... Uh, and that's that's the tricky thing and how how fans get into stadia that's that's another question absolutely yeah and that's really tough and and i mean you've you know going back to those you know those big tours that you've you know supported artists and you've worked with people, the likes of sting and uh, there was um was it, was it beyonce well we 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 supported her in a show uh, before the grand prix ball up in up in uh, the Stone House, it was fantastic. And she was there in her earlier days, actually, she was singing, um, if you wanna put a ring on it, if oh, you wanna put a ring, oh, 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 oh. And it was fantastic, fantastic to see. And fantastic to see the hoopla around her as well. The fact that nobody could actually see her until she made the stage. So there were, there were covers, she got out of a car, literally straight into a canopy. Oh. And it was all very, very, but it was, it was the, it was creating the, the, the hoopla around stardom, yes. isn't it? You know, that's what it was. I, I think, so very impressive. It, yeah, I think, well, I, I do think now there does, like, the situation that we find ourselves in now, that all seems like a big fat nonsense to me. And I just sort of think, are we ever going to go back to that, you know, those um, celebrity culture and, you know, where people are put on a pedestal and idolised and influences and that whole kind of, Culture, or do you think that, that this is giving us a time to reflect and stand back and go, actually, you know, fashion's a bit silly or fashion's a bit fickle. I mean, obviously, I work in the fashion industry as well, and that concerns me that the two industries I work in, style and arts, both massively affected. Is that yeah. going to be perceived as slightly trivial? And are we going to pander to um, <coughs> stars having riders and ridiculous entourages and all the celebrity gossip? Do you think that'll ever come back, or do you think we're going to just say, "Do you know what? This is we, we've we've had we've had life without it, and actually, it's a superfluous to requirement." Well, I think you've you've partially answered your own question there. Um, I, I do that a lot, actually. Yeah, no, but 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 in a good way. But I I would endorse that. I think that what I've noticed is seeing artists like Bono singing a song into his mobile phone that he's come up with just to deliver it to the world because it's, he's in lockdown as well, has normalized superstars, mm. but for the better. It's made them, 
you can see them for who they are. You can see them for them for their for their their raw talent, um, rather than the overproduced talent that we're used to seeing now. In particularly in pop, but in popular culture, it's so overproduced that we, we're now in a position of of looking at people, the people that have come to the fore, are people who are doing real things mm. and doing things in a in an unedited naked sort of way exposed way and i like that i like that particularly from a media perspective because i think that it allows natural ability to come through without having to be post-produced post this and work to worked on so i think people are seeing people are excited to see those artists and those people speaking in a raw natural way from their own houses i mean i've watched like the graham norton show and I sort of like it without the audience. I like it where he's going into someone's home and they're going, hi. And they're talking in exactly the same, like Mark Ruffalo was on, I think. And he, he didn't have any Wi-Fi in his house in upstate New York. So he had to go and find a B&B &B with good Wi-Fi. So he's in a, he's, for all his stardom, he's in the same position as a lot of people who are going, where do I find my Wi-Fi? And I think what it's done for social media, because I think particularly having three teenagers, I've noticed it's improved something that we as adults you and i as it were and probably most of the listeners were becoming quite cynical about it was somewhere where people were being abused somewhere where people were, were finding it was vacuous it was tedious it was expensive it was costing people lots it probably is still all those things but it's all those things and a lot more and it's much more de it's become much more the world of reality it's our new reality and it's a reality that i think it means you and i can be together it means that i can see my family it means i can see and actually, all the things it was invented for and given to the world for free for, mm. um, it's now, it's, it's, re, it's re embracing. And, and I'm feeling very, very, that's, that excites me to see this mm. new, fresh world that potentially we could go into. Um, it doesn't excite me seeing the world suddenly descend on the beaches and uh, carrying on like nothing's changed. No. no. That's slightly, slightly disappointing. But at the same time, slightly inevitable when it could be argued guidance isn't exactly clear um it could be argued but not we're not getting too political you know we're either locked down or we're not <laughs> i can't yeah, really see I, I can't really see how there's a middle ground if you want to prevent people getting infected with no cure but that's no. you know, that's yeah. that's that's how we are observing it as a family i know there are frontline workers and and people with very important jobs far more important than mine that i've got no option Mm. but it does seem strange that 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 that, that we're in a we're in a stretch that's a strange part of where we're at but i think back to your question i think people have enjoyed and will continue to enjoy um seeing people in a much less cosmetic way yeah very much so yeah, yeah. says i yeah, with a virtual background <laughs> yeah so wishing that you were in barbados but actually you know yeah. we're so blessed with the weather and but yeah i think it, i think taking away as you say all the artifice and the and the bells and whistles smoke and mirrors whatever you want to call it it's been really yeah. gratifying and 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 made it very real and and made people feel much more approachable so from that perspective i think the end entertainment industry even though it's been so hard hit has had to take a good long hard look at itself and go actually the way we were maybe conducting ourselves in the first place was not cool and you know let's just be you know a little bit less egotistical and treat our fellow human beings with a little bit more respect yeah end of the lesson <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so you say you know obviously the three of you are speaking and you're, you know are you still doing are you still singing together well, we're, we're using our skills outside of Tenors Unlimited because all our work for Tenors Unlimited has stopped as we, because we're primarily theatre theater group. And all, as all theatres, as we were saying, as all theatres are closed, um, other than operating theatres, um, we are, we, we, yes, we, we are no longer able to function. I mean, we, until, until, until we can get back on the road and, and reform as Tenors Unlimited, we, yes, we're, we're very much existing in our, different worlds as scott paul and jem yeah yeah so you so as i said earlier at the beginning of the interview you've become a little bit of an internet sensation and i've been watching your um your um videos with interest and and, and tell the listeners what you've been doing every thursday night because i think it is so heartening what you've done and the joy that you're bringing to people that might not normally have access to your kind of music as well well um 
it started as a WhatsApp group in the street to arrange a street party about five months or so ago with quite a sociable street, normal sort of uh, suburban street down in southwest London. And then we had lockdown. And then everybody realised that there's a singer in the street who hasn't got any work. So they said to him, well, Jem's around. He could sing. Could he sing a song on a Thursday night? And I actually, my initial thought was, oh, bloody, that sounds a bit... I'm not sure people will want that. But actually, my wife persuaded me. And I did a bit of thinking about it. I thought, what well, actually, what a lovely thing. Um, it's my gift and it's, I, I'm not doing anything other than sort of trying to must, rustle work that I can for myself. Um, and what a great thing to do. And, it, and what happened in a way was, wasn't my thinking, but it was, I was the vessel through which it happened. And then uh, people have really enjoyed a, a song dedicated to the NHS and frontline workers on a Thursday night in the street. And then one of my kids, Jack, was filming it. And he obviously primarily again to send to the WhatsApp group, but then it's gone out. Paul's very kindly put it out through Tenors Unlimited as well, and uh, and it's yeah, it's had a great response from all around the world because people I think are looking. The weeks flight, the weeks can be very slow, but it's mm. surprising how quickly the Thursdays come around, isn't it? It's a very it strange is. one. It is. Is very... it Thursday again? Is it Thursday again? Yeah, it's uh, crazy. I know. I mean, I do a hashtag Fashion Friday, um, and you know, obviously every Friday. And every Friday, I say, "Oh my God, is it Friday already? What the hell happened to the last yeah. week?" Because yeah. you know, the days yeah. blend into one, and you know, I mean, I, yeah. Unless I look at my phone, I don't know what day of the week it is. Let alone the no, day. And so, so, and, and a lot of people in the street who are, are genuinely isolated come out, and we're we there's a good distance between houses, fortunately, and everyone does the clap and everyone claps and cheers and then I've thought I've got quite a bit of kit here so I've managed to get some I put big speakers outside and uh, try and think of a song that's appropriate because we've got quite a lot of songs I think in my over my the years that, have, that would be appropriate and hopefully they all are and uh, that's it so we send the group what I'm going to be singing in advance so they can research it and the words or whatever I think with my thinking about why they're appropriate and then i sing the song and then and then it goes sort of on facebook for but from paul for te on the tennis unlimited facebook and uh and then it yeah i mean we've had it's been it's, it's been proven to be very very popular i think there's a lot of people doing it now but when we first did it about at the very very beginning it was considered the local press and everything were quite excited by this chap mm. that was singing on the street. Um, and oddly enough, we've worked very, very hard over the years to create publicity. This wasn't intended to create any publicity whatsoever. And it's created a lot of publicity. So there you go. Out of adversity come, come nice, nice positives. Exactly. And that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, all these years, you know, you couldn't pay for this kind of PR. And as you, it's, you know, it's sad that it's coming off the back of this, but it's lovely because I think it's, it's very natural. It's, you know, you're obviously just out there just singing to your neighbours and people are loving it. And it's, it's given you a different audience that, you know, it's that your neighbours probably, you know, didn't, a lot of them probably didn't even know that you were a singer, let alone in a band, because you were British. We don't really talk to all our neighbours. I don't know how friendly <laughs> your neighbourhood is. My, neighbor, my, my neighbourhood is not like that. But, I mean, I think there is that British reserve that we don't tend to sort of mix with think, our neighbours. I think, I think also it's very easy to think, well, I'm very busy away. I'm at a theatre, I'm on a ship. We're abroad in America. We go traditionally or normally we're in America three times a year. So we're away a lot. And when you're away a lot, the last thing you want to do when you come home is sing, really. You just want to relax and just, mm -hmm. just, just not sing for a bit. But what this has done is focused me back in my community with my friends, which we've always had a very good friendship because of all the children as well. So I'm very lucky. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it certainly has opened up brand new friendships, even within the street. And if you've got a gift, um, then people need to hear it, don't they? Mm -hmm. And in an odd sort of way, it's not just something that should be safe to, for theatres. It's something that, if it brings pleasure to people and it's proven to, then I'm I'm more than happy to do it. It's a, it's a, it's an honour to do it actually, rather than a chore. And I'm delighted to be able to do it. And I'm going to be doing it this evening. Fantastic, and probably for the next, you know, however many Thursdays to come. I know. You know? Let's hope I don't run out of songs, Nancy. 
I doubt that. I, doubt, I mean, your repertoire is pretty impressive. I think, um, <laughs> but, but what's, what's also so lovely is that, I think as you mentioned in the beginning, that the whole reason you set up the band and the, or the group in the first place was because, you know, you wanted to do something a bit different and, and, and opera or stroke classical music could be seen as a bit highbrow and a bit elitist. Yeah. But you've got, you know, you've kind of knocked that all on the head now because everybody can see what you're doing. And actually, he's just a nice, normal chap. You just have to have an extraordinary voice. Well, you're very kind. Very kind. I think I did have a word with myself because I think it's all very well getting out there and being spontaneous. But I did have, I did take myself into the, into my office and say, I need to be singing a little bit better than, than I've been presenting myself on these videos. <laughs> so I told myself off. <laughs> but it's all about, it's all about the truth though. It is. I, I totally agree. I, the whole process has been very much a natural one and I'm, and obviously can't, can't be with the guys. So it's sort of been, it, it, it's a lot of it is my, my, sort of love of singing with them as well in my, me being on my own it's I, I feel very much that they're still with me um mm. and it's uh it's I, it's it's an, it's i haven't yet had any cynicism towards it it's and i'm glad of that because it's certainly not that it's the street looks forward to it and i get lots of messages what do you sing tonight what do you do to do what do you do and they all come out and we've had the sun every week yeah the meant to be even when we had a storm, I think the storm cleared at like half past seven and then eight o'clock. And I think that night was something like, what did I sing? It was something like somewhere, it wasn't somewhere over the rainbow, but it was something along, along those lines. It was quite weird, really. He was singing this song and uh, the Impossible Dream, I think it was. Okay. No, it wasn't. Yes. No, it wasn't. It was Impossible Dream. It was um, um, Never Walk Alone. Oh, when you walk through a storm and you can see the clouds in the sky and uh, people come to you, this blimey, look at the clouds cleared. No, it's been lovely. I've enjoyed it very much. So they'll be saying he'll be walking on water next. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, only Jesus can do that. Um, and also you mentioned that you're um, doing um, coaching students via Zoom and FaceTime as well. Is, is that another string to your bow? Because presumably you didn't have time to do that before. Well, it was something I used to do many years ago and uh, before we set up the group and, and it sort of, it waned really because to be with students, you've got to be able to be consistent with a student. And most of that involves traditionally them coming to your house or you going to their house or meeting at a practice area, something like that, and then you have a lesson. But I've noticed that like this Zoom call, um, lessons can be very, very successful over in one-to-one -one like this different in a group we have to adopt a different approach but one-to-one yeah. -one, absolutely not a problem at all of course there are small restrictions but you gain other things for example the the, the singer can feel more relaxed because they're in their own environment yes. they can feel more relaxed because they're not uh having to travel they're not hot and flustered because they've been on public transport that sort of mm -hmm. thing so there are advantages to it so they're in their home place and um and i think for the most part the sound quality is very good for most singers. I, I, I even think you could you could you could rehearse to a very high classical level mm -hmm. like this as well and train. Um, you some may argue that you, you lose nuance things like that, but I, I'm not seeing it really. I see for 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 the most people that I'm working with, it's an excellent medium. And actually, you're looking you you're, you're front on. If I was at the piano and then looking round and doing things mm -hmm. like that, it's not quite the same. It's uh, yeah, I've cool. I've enjoyed it. I think there's a lot of advantages to it in, in many ways. And so hopefully it's something that now now I've reengaged in it and it's and it can work. I could mm -hmm. I could be in America or exactly. even in a theatre dressing room. You could have a half an hour lesson with somebody very easily. So it's something I'm going to keep going. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. That's another. Yeah, thing. same here. I mean, you know, my podcasts are usually recorded in person. Um, or on the phone but this is lovely and I just think you know I do think this possibly is a way forward because as you say you can be anywhere in the world it's great and you know people well, you, think, you, you think in the past Nancy when we've come when I've come up to your show and and the, the infrastructure that's involved I get on three trains or yeah. drive and and then then I think in the past where your studio was based you came and picked me up and then yeah. and then I'm, we're watching the clock for returning home now all very all very nice because you're a meeting person I, I, I still won't dismiss the beauty yeah. of being in person yeah. but at the same time um how simple is this and still as still as almost close. as close yeah yeah 
yeah Abs yep. absolutely no it's been amazing catching up with you again and how can we find you and find out about you and your amazing videos as well um well my videos have very kindly been put up by paul uh at, at the, on the face on tennisunlimited.com and on facebook so tennis unlimited facebook that's where the the videos are going and uh contacting us you can contact tennis unlimited at contact tennisunlimited.com so that's good you can and then you can get me directly at gemsharple70 at gmail.com so that's my own personal independent email gemsharple70 at gmail.com um, but that's you know that's pretty much it really that's as straightforward as that well it's as i say it's, it's you know it's always a pleasure talking to you i never thought we were talking under these circumstances i have to say but as you say you know it's a it's a great way to to catch up so jim thank you so much for for being my guest and it's um, a pleasure nancy lovely as always i'm looking forward to seeing you at a show in the it, 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 at the theatre. I mean, where was it? It's been the stables in Milton Keynes the last few times, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, so the Nancy Stevens Arts and Style show um, is available on all platforms. This is the isolation interview with Jim Sharples. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the other side.